Welcome back to my channel, it's Indigo China, and in today's video, I'll be answering your questions from Telenim. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I've been doing, over the past month, I've been answering questions and taking autistic confessions via a platform called Telenim. Now, Telenim basically allows you to ask me anonymous questions, and it is fully anonymous. I don't know who's on the other end asking that question. And the reason I set this up is so that I could have more engagement with you guys, my viewers and subscribers. So today I have my laptop. So here are the questions. My laptop is so big and I'm so petite. <laughs> it looks a bit funny. But yeah, so here is my telonym. Excuse all of the tabs that I have open. ADHD. Um, so I'm going to let's go through the questions and in regards to your confessions i won't do the confessions today purely because there's not that many confessions and what i want to do is do a video where there's at least 20 confessions so when i reach 20 confessions i'll do a video and i would like to start doing them monthly so again if you're new um let me just say if you're on the spectrum or you suspect you're on a spectrum or autistic or you have Asperger's, ASD, ASC, however you want to label it. So if you're on the spectrum or think you are and you have a autistic confession, please uh, go to the description of this video and click on my link and just submit a confession. And then maybe in a month's time, I'll have enough confessions to just read them out. And the purpose of doing this is because a lot of us carry so much shit on our chest and in our minds and we have no other means to express it or if we do it doesn't feel right or it doesn't feel like we've actually told someone about it so submitting a confession anonymously and it being read from someone else who's not yourself it can actually be quite um, therapeutic to hear it um, and just to put things into perspective so that's why I've started doing this and I hope to get many confessions. So that's that out of the way. And now I'm just going to go through some of the questions that people have asked me, which honestly I didn't expect. But yeah, it's fine. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, literally anything at all, I'll answer them. So I'll go through about 10 or 20 of the questions and then I'll wrap this up. So let's start with the first one. First question is, do you think guys should make the first move and why? So I don't think guys should automatically make the first move. It depends on the person. I think anyone, regardless of their gender, can make the first move. So for me, gender isn't important. But then in saying that, that's my general perspective. Like if I was um, referring to you or someone else, that's my wider perspective. But for myself personally, as an individual, I want my partner, regardless of whether they're male, female, trans, because I'm pansexual, right? I can like anyone regardless of their gender or their gender identification. So regardless of how that person identifies or what gender they are, I want them to make the first move. I'm not saying they should in the society that we live in, but I'm saying that for me, if you want me, <laughs> then make the first move because I'm not going to. Like, I am confident and I can easily make the first move, but I just don't want to. And I know that the right person for me is going to be the one that um, not chases me. I don't like using that word, but they're going to be the one that uh, pursues me and puts in the effort so I can acknowledge them and do the same for them. So it's like a give and take rather than a, a chaser and a, a runner dynamic, which is quite toxic and unhealthy in my opinion. But moving on to the next question. Do you like the city where you live? I live in London and London is great for commuting, transport, supermarkets, shops, networking, uh, social venues such as bars, pubs, clubs, what else? All of that rhymed. <laughs> but London's great for all of that stuff, but I'm not a city person. I wouldn't consider myself one purely because I like quiet and I like nature and I like being in harmony and peace with myself. And I feel like as soon as I enter central London, I don't feel that at all. 
when I'm um, back home, which is more of a suburban area, it's not city at all, I feel more calm and uh, more centered within myself. So I like London, but in terms of the long term, it's not for me. And I don't like it for, you know, the, the crowds, the busyness, the delays on public transport, what else, um, the expensiveness of pretty much everything, including housing, bills, food shopping, everything's expensive here. So, you know, it has its good points, but then those good points can also be flipped over on their head and they can become bad points. So, yeah, I like it and I'm very grateful to have been born here versus being born in, <laughs> in America. <laughs> Racism, like apparently that's a thing in America. I've never been before, so I cannot comment on it. But a lot of people say that uh, there's a lot of racism that goes on there. But um, in London, I have not experienced racism, um, or at least I don't recall experiencing racism, to be honest. And a lot of my friends are uh, from different places. You know, uh, it's very diverse in London, and that's probably the 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 biggest thing I love about London, the diversity. So yeah, that's my answer on that one. I like London, but I will be moving out to a more countryside area just so I can, you know, feel calm and, and have that slow living lifestyle that I actually want. So um, the next question is, if you have friends that don't make you feel valued or important, how do you deal? So if I had friends that didn't make me feel valued or important, I would sit down with them and I would tell them I'm not feeling valued by you and I don't feel like, uh, you know, you hold me in any kind of importance. I probably wouldn't say it like that, but, <laughs> you know, for the purpose of the question, I would tell them that um, and I would be straightforward with them and then I would see what they say. If they have a positive reaction um, and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that, uh, then I would kind of bring about a solution. Like we would work together, it'd be a back and forth conversation that we would have to ascertain how can we improve things? How can I feel better? Is there something that I should be doing? Is there something that they should be doing? So we would work together with it um, in that way. Um, if they didn't have a positive reaction and they were like, well, I don't know what you're talking about because I'm always here, always da 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 da. Uh, if they, were in that frame of mind then I probably would cut them off because that's the kind of person I am I don't need people in my life that aren't uplifting me in the way that they should be and yeah everyone in your life should be making well not making you but everyone in your life when you think about them you should feel important to them and valued uh, by them because I feel like a lot of a lot of the times when it comes to being valued and feeling important is actually within ourselves because if you don't feel that within yourself then I think the people that you come across you're not going to feel that with them either like either you're going to attract people that don't um, allow you to feel that or don't trigger that feeling within you you know that positive response or you're going to attract people that do trigger that response and they are showing you that you're important and valued but because you don't feel it within yourself you're not feeling it if that makes sense so yeah that's what I would do I would just sit down with my friend tell them how I feel if it's a positive reaction we would work together on a solution and go from there if the solution didn't work and they were for example I'm trying to think of an example with this one um because this may be something that someone else is going through and they posed it in a question so um example okay for example i'm big on communication okay if my friend wasn't communicating with me and uh leaving me out of things then i would tell them about it and you know work towards a solution together let's say a month later they're still doing the same shit, leaving me out of things and not communicating clearly I'll bring it up again and at that point I may just be like okay I don't actually want you in my life or I may just distance myself uh, but then I may give them a second chance. It depends on the person, it depends on the situation and the scenario so it's not always going to be black and white or the same thing and it depends on how I'm feeling as well. So yeah I would give them a chance either once or twice if that doesn't work then I would say goodbye and uh, same thing if they had a negative reaction when I brought it up 
um, about not feeling valued, uh, I would say bye. That, that That's it, really. Um, I think this is going to be the last question that I'm going to ask, uh, because I'm aware this video is getting quite long. Um, okay, this question is quite a, a fun question. It says, what is the best colour for a car? And then ironically, it has a red car next to it. <laughs> that makes me laugh. But the best colour for a car, it just depends on you. Like, what is your favourite colour? Get that in a car. I mean, if it's a, a bright ass orange and you don't want to stand out, then you may just think to yourself, I need a colour that doesn't make me stand out and it doesn't have to be my favourite one. I don't know. But I'm not too fussed on a colour for a car. I'd probably get black because black goes with everything. And I feel like it's cute as well. Like if I step out of a black car, it just it just is fitting, right? At least that's, that's how I see it. If I was to step out of a pink car, first of all, that would be stereotypical, <laughs> and I'm not a stereotype. And pink for me is too. Uh, I don't. I like pink, and I wish you could see my sheets. Maybe I'll show you in a bit. But they're also pink. But I don't like pink in high doses, no. And I feel like a car is something that I would have for 10, 20, 30 years or more. And I wouldn't want to have a pink car for that long. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, uh, when it comes to uh, long term and thinking of the future and what I like and what I dislike, I would go with black. I don't like bright colours on a regular basis and I don't like uh, pastel colours on a regular basis either. I just like black. Okay, so that answers that question and I will end this video here. I hope you enjoyed. I'm actually going to show you my sheets before I go because they're pink, right? They're cute pink and uh, yeah, I'm actually changing them because uh, they need changing. So. <laughs> There we go. I'm gonna replace them with these. Blue is my favourite colour, so yeah. I definitely wouldn't get this pink in a in a car. That would oh god, that would be too much. Yeah. But yeah, um thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. And feel free to ask me a question on my telonym or submit an autistic confession if you have one. Bye.